Thank you so much for coming. Aloha and good afternoon. Um, you know, last week, Friday, there was furlough Fridays and we were saddened to see the students here and they should have been in school. Um, and furlough Fridays are definitely a cause for concern, but we must deal with the bottom line issue. Um, furlough Fridays have underscored a much larger problem, and that's a broken educational system. But we're excited today to see that there is consensus building. Um, there are three governors of the past who sat in this room behind us that agree with the educational assessment that we've been mentioning for quite some time now. Um, and the change should come this year. Or what are the things that we're, we're basically wanting to share with you today? The legislature won't face the facts. We need to put our students first, no more excuses. We agree with the governor's statement yesterday that we are not equipping public school students for jobs and for college. As you know, when you're going to, when these students are going to um, community college, there's 79% that need remedial math or at least more than half uh, remedial uh, reading. And companies are saying across the state that they aren't prepared to go into the job market. Um, our next slide is Hawaii is consistently near the bottom in terms of national ranking. Okay, this is a fact that we've known for many years. As you know, um, Hawaii is ranked 45th and 41st in math across the country out of the 50, 50 states. And in 2007, Hawaii ranked 48th and 45th in reading proficiency out of the 50 states. And this is through the NAEP report card. Another fact is that we rank 13th in the country. We, we are expending on the average about 11,000 per student and this does not, you don't, you're not considering a debt service or fringe benefits. So that's $11,000 per student, which ranks 13th, the highest in the nation. And I think we have to remember that, especially since we have bills to raise taxes for education this year. And the other observation and fact that we know is we know that principals and teachers and students and parents and communities are frustrated with the system that we have given them. The bureaucracy and climbing up and down the ladder to get an answer on how to change education. So what are the causes of all of these results that we've endured across the years? The other observation and fact that we know is we know that principals and teachers and students and parents and communities are frustrated with the system that we have given them. The bureaucracy and climbing up and down the ladder to get an answer on how to change education. The causes are, number one, that there is no accountability. There is no accountability right now in our system. Governor put it best when she said, the buck stops nowhere. Today we are going to have education governance bills being heard in the House Education Committee. These things, um, these, these offerings, these bills are being introduced have to do with an appointed Board of Education, also get, getting rid of the Board of Education. Uh, we are promoting and advocating for not only eliminating the Board of Education, but instead replacing that with um, the, the Governor's Cabinet having the superintendent in the governor's cabinet. And when we do have an audit, in which we've had an audit recently, where the report, and now it states in Hawaii Business, February 2010 edition, it says this, fixing schools is a broken process. And one of the comments that it says in this magazine is DOE hired consultants who supervised contractors, who supervised their contractors, who supervised subcontractors, who actually did the repairs. This is, and we had called for a, we had called for a comprehensive management and, and, and financial audit for many years, and it has not been done for th more than 30 years. And imagine what will come about if, uh, if we commit the resources to do a comprehensive audit of the Department of Education. So we come back to one of the bills, uh, two of the bills. One is to re raid the Hurricane Relief Fund and also to raid your GE taxes to fund education. 
Um, we strongly agree with the previous governors that the lack of funding is not the problem. According to the editorials from Governors Ariyoshi, Waihe'e, and Cayetano, the U.S. Census Bureau ranks, 13, ranks Hawaii as the 13th highest in terms of per student operating expenditures. So now you may ask, what are the Republican solutions? We came in front of you in October of 2009 telling you what we thought as our, our solution should be. We mentioned about abolishing the Board of Education and putting the superintendent as a cabinet level position under the governor. Some of the proposals that you will see today in the Education Committee makes the process of doing this much more convoluted than it is today. We want direct accountability for the education system through the governor's office and the governor. We also want a comprehensive audit. As we mentioned, audits come up with all kinds of things that are wrong in the public education system today. We're fighting for these audits so this money can get to the parents, the students, the teachers, and the principals. And of course, we agree with President Obama in supporting charter school laws. This is the area where the community can come together, can speak up, and put their priorities first, which we're sure wouldn't have been furlough Fridays. Um, thank you so much for joining us, and we're available for any questions that you may have. Our proposals that we put forward are called Kids Act, and we need to act for kids this session right now. Why are we here in front of the governor's office? It's a reminder because it's been four decades, four chief executives that have said we've got to fix education, and that is what this caucus has been saying, and the message is this building has got to get the message on the third and the second floor to do something about it. All of the executive in the decades have lined up that it's time to act. We have got to move, and today is a great day in history but it's got to send a message to those in the House and the Senate to get on with, get the kids back in school, and let's get on with fixing education. And one primary thing that we also, that I forgot to mention, is the mandate of school days, which is the 180 school days. And through that, if you, no more excuses, you put that first and foremost on your agenda to pass that, and we, everyone that works around the school system, will have to figure out a way to make that happen.